Hello, it's time for some film fun on France 24 on today's show. Creepy loners fill the screen in our French pick of the week, the cleverly crafted thriller Nobody From Nowhere. France's best-loved comic book heroes Asterix and Obelix hit cinemas in 3D for the very first time. And in the family, it's three hours long, but not a moment is wasted, according to our star film critic Lisa Nesselson, who got me choked up just talking about Patrick Wang's film. For that and more, Lisa is waiting behind me with bated breath. Let's get started. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. Let's start with our French pick of the week, Nobody From Nowhere. Matthew Kasovitz gives an extraordinarily entertaining performance. In this movie, he plays a 42-year-old reclusive bachelor who uh, sells real estate for a living. He barely has a pulse, uh, but boy, does he have a hell of a secret life. And the, as the movie starts, he's uh, tidying up his, uh, his house before he puts his head in the oven and turns on the gas. And then the director cycles back to uh, show us how he may have gotten so depressed as to want to do such a thing. Let's watch. Pas fumé. Non. Que je vois à travers les gens. Je lis en eux comme une partition. Et vous, quand je vous regarde, je ne vois rien. Vous êtes comme un chat. On vous oublie. Puis on vous croise. So apart from being a creepy weirdo, as you and I might refer to him, um, he's an estate agent in Paris. And as many people might know, that's a little bit of a, it's a, little bit of a nightmare getting an apartment in Paris. <laughs> Does he make it easier? I wouldn't say he makes it easier. He makes it a whole lot stranger, especially for himself, because he suffers from a condition called depersonalization, which means that literally he feels hollow. He has no personality of his own. And the way he makes up for that to pass into society is that he borrows personalities from some of the people that he shows apartments to. So he's got this fabulous workshop in his basement where he makes elaborate latex masks and puts on wigs and, and makeup and stuff, and then ac actually impersonates these people down to things that they said while they were looking at the apartments. And then um, it stars Matthew Kasovich as the creepy weirdo, as I'm going to refer to him. Um, internationally, <laughs> people might not know his name, but he's a big French film personality. Oh, he? he's, a, he's a very important French personality. Uh, you may have seen him as the male lead opposite Audrey Tautou in Amélie. Uh, you may have inadvertently seen him in The Fifth Element. He directed the thriller The Crimson Rivers, so he's a writer, director, and actor. I think as a general rule, he's better as an actor than he is uh, behind the camera. But in 2011, he made a, a, a very good, serious French drama about American, uh, sorry, uh, French military intervention in their former colony. And uh, when uh, the Academy uh, didn't nominate it for any major awards here in France, he sent out a notorious uh, tweet suggesting that they perform a biological impossibility on themselves. And instead of ostracizing him, they let him uh, come on the show and present an award and made a joke out of it. So, no, he's very much a part of the <laughs> landscape. But well, let's move on to France's um, best loved comic book heroes, another big part of our landscape here Obelix and Asterix. Um, I actually like these characters. They're the heroes of a series of, you know, hardback comic books that the French have such affection for. The characters have funny names. The translators have worked very hard to render in English and lots of other languages. They're well plotted, they're anchored in history, and they're pretty funny, and there's a lot of expressions in them that have actually worked their way into everyday French conversation. And I've never really understood um, this obsession with comic book heroes, but the latest movie is in 3D, and that's for the very first time. Asterix, the land of the Gods is being released in France and Claire Williams takes a look now at what the new film has to offer. Same mission, same characters, but this time in 3D. Asterix, the land of the gods, takes us back to 50 years BC, with Asterix, the immortal, and his oversized sidekick Obelix again defending their Breton village against the Romans. Caesar has come up with a new plan to crush the last pocket of resistance. He attempts stealth invasion through civilization, building a new Rome, the land of the gods, on the village's doorstep. The film chronicles the 17th volume of the world-famous French comic series. Writer René Goscinny and artist Albert Uderzo produced the first volume 55 years ago, 
they ended up making 24 together until Cassini's death in 1977. Uderzo said he hadn't planned to continue, but Asterix's fans left him little choice. The characters didn't belong to us, they belonged to the readers. They said, you must, as an artist, carry on creating these characters. Nine volumes have been adapted into cartoons, five into films. It took three years to make the latest one in 3D. One of the biggest challenges was staying true to what the characters, Asterix, Obelix, the village, Uderzo's entire universe looks like and transform that into computer-generated images in 3D. The film isn't just for kids. The storyline weaves in French social issues, including fears of real estate development in the countryside. And the Roman army goes on strike. The directors are hoping this film will be a big Christmas box office hit. Well, one place um, people can go and see this is at Paris's fabulous Grand Rex. And if you're lucky enough to be in Paris now through the end of the year, you should absolutely do that. I'm, I'm tempted to say whether you understand French or not, because the theatre itself is so extraordinary this time of year. It was built in 1932. It's magnificent. It has 2,700 seats. And every Christmas season, they have a basin under the stage that fills up with incredible amounts of water. And it shoots um, plumes of water into the air. It's a sound and light show, but with these fountains. Water actually bounces from the second balcony onto the stage. It's wacky. I go every year. I have a grin ear to ear. And uh, the theater is a smaller variation on Radio City Music Hall in New York. Is it your favorite cinema in Paris? Um, it's, it's absolutely my favorite building to see a movie in, yeah. Okay. Well, to an independent film now that was out in the U.S. in 2011, but it's only just reaching um, France's shores now in the family. The storyline, I haven't seen it, but you mentioned the storyline before, and that alone makes me want to blub. It's incredibly melancholy and, and involving and, up, and ultimately uplifting, so you needn't be afraid of it. It's um, uh, an in American independent film uh, written by, directed by, and starring Patrick Wang, and he plays Joey, a contractor in Tennessee who has been happily living for about five years with another man, uh, a teacher named Cody, and together they have been raising Cody's biological son, Chip, who's six years old, incredibly happy, smart, well-adjusted. Tragedy intervenes when, uh, unfortunately, Cody is killed in a car accident. He never updated his will, and so this son of his ends up uh, being in the care of uh, the dead man's sister, and so Joey has to figure out a way to get back the boy he considers to be his son. Let's take a look. The executor in his will. He left all his assets in my name so that he could see that Chip was taken care of. You don't have to worry about Chip. Of course I need to worry about Chip. I'm his father. Joey, Chip is our responsibility now. Can you tell me, Joey, why you think you'll be a good father to Chip? Oh, very touching. Um, it's three hours long, though, Lisa. Does it warrant that amount of time? Every minute is well used. It's, it's just incredibly involving. You feel the characters are real. And something that I admire about how deaf this story is is that the words gay and homosexual are never brought up. If you had a heterosexual couple with a kid, you would never say, look, they're heterosexual, look, they're straight, and they have a kid. They're just a couple, and that's the way it's presented here. And it was out in 2011 in um, the rest of the world. Why is it only out here now? Uh, well, two reasons for that. I think it's, it's very topical now because uh, gay marriage called mariage pour tous was made the law here in France in 2013. And also, one of the things that's so admirable about the French film scene is that there are independent distributors who seek out movies that are just plain good and bring them out and work with independent cinemas to, to bring them out and bring them to audiences. And when I saw it, the, the theater was almost completely full. So nobody cares whether it was made in 2011 or last week. It's an excellent movie. It's three hours, but three excellent hours see it. Got to love France for that. Um, well, we're wrapping up with a film called Third Person. Impressive cast, great writer and director, and a daring premise, but... 
But uh, it turns out in the United States, most people hated it with a passion. I'm not really sure why. It's called Puzzle here in France. It takes place in three exotic locations. That would be New York, Paris, and Rome. Um, Paul Haggis wrote and directed Crash, which of course had a, uh, a very elaborate cast with interlocking stories that were only gradually revealed. Here we have uh, Liam Neeson, Mila Kunis, Olivia Wilde, James Franco, Adrian Brody, Kim Basinger, and more. And uh, Neeson plays a writer who's having a hard time concentrating. I can simply sympathize with that and some elaborate distractions come his way. I see, it sounds really good. So whether you're with the critics or will you like it as Lisa did, we'll let you make your own minds up. Thank you very much, Lisa, for joining us. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. It's supposed to be about a man who can only feel through the characters he creates, but he keeps trying to be something else. Is she there? Kids? Girl, I don't see her two years. I'm sorry for staring. Very hard not to. We just need to convince the judge that you're stable enough to get visitation again. What do you want, Julia? I need to be able to touch him. He is my son. Grant? Yeah. <laughs> don't say that. This is daddy's work. <laughs> 